Hi, I'm David Jacob, the Regional Science Coordinator at Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES and the Coordinator for Science 21. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the Science 21 curriculum and how it was written to address the New York State Science Learning Standards. The training model for Science 21 online training will be different in a few ways. When you sign up for a training series, each unit training will be divided into two sessions per unit and are designated A and B sessions. The two sessions together will count as a six-hour CTLE credit-bearing course per unit. For example, kindergarten through second grade has three uh, curriculum units, which means that there are six training sessions, unit 1A and 1B, unit 2A, 2B, and so on. For grades three through five, there are four curriculum units, which means there are eight trainings. A participating teacher will spend less time at BOCES, but receive the same number of CTLE credits as our old training model. This allows for more flexible scheduling and less time out of class for the teacher. Each session will have a one hour of asynchronous assignments that must be completed before you attend each synchronous session. It will, will require reading through each of the Science 21 lessons discussed during the synchronous meeting, watching videos that will advise on a lesson or a series of lessons, brief pre-session assignments that will help you prepare for the meeting, and a short pre-assessment that will be used by the trainer to tailor each meeting to the participant needs. You must complete this pre-assessment before you allowed entrance into the meeting. Then you will attend a two-hour online synchronous meeting that will encompass understanding the New York State Science Learning Standards, review the three dimensions of the standards, lesson immersions that give the participants the experience of at least one of the main learning concepts while employing the three dimensions, a lesson-by-lesson -lesson overview of the purpose, the non-negotiables, and the critical factors and group discussions of each lesson. Once again, don't forget the pre-assessment. Completion is required to enter the synchronous training. Let's get started. The New York State PK-12 Science Learning Standards are based on the National Research Council's A Framework for K-12 Science Education, Practices, Cross-Cutting Concepts, and Core Ideas, and are similar to the Next Generation Standards used around the United States. New York State has made a few minor modifications to the NGSS. These standards usher in a major shift in how science instruction is developed and implemented through the pre-K pre through 12 continuum. These new standards were adopted in December of 2016 and became effective on July 1, 2017. This chart represents a revised implementation timeline due to the school closures that happened statewide in the spring of 2020. The first new assessments based on these standards will be introduced in June of 2023 for grade five and grade eight. For the New York State PK-12 Science Learning Standards, there are three major components that make the vision for science and teaching learning different than how we previously approached classroom science at the elementary level. These components are the use of phenomenon instruction, the three dimensions of science teaching and learning, students using the three dimensions to make sense of science phenomena and core science ideas. Let's take a look at these three components one at a time. What the heck is a phenomenon? I'm going to quote an explanation from Paul Anderson, one of the thought leaders for these new science standards. You can find this explanation and more resources on his website, thewonderofscience.com. A phenomenon is simply an observable event. In the science classroom, a carefully chosen phenomenon can drive student inquiry. Phenomena are relevance, add relevance to the science classroom, showing students science in their own world. A good phenomenon is observable, interesting, complex, and align to the appropriate standard. We use phenomenon to help students see how science or engineering applies to real-world situations before we introduce the science idea. This way the student can do what a scientist does, 
observe something interesting, then ask themselves, how is that happening? Then try to develop more questions or explanations by using models, investigations, or experiments that produce observable or collected data. They then use this information to communicate their explanations using their data, sometimes calculations, as evidence to support their explanation or claim. This is similar to what scientists and engineers do to make sense of the natural and human designed world around them. Organization of the Framework and the New York State Science Learning Standards. Usually referred to as the three dimensions, all three of these components of the standards are expected to be integrated into every science learning experience. The science and engineering practices are the skills that scientists use to investigate science ideas. We're not talking about the steps of the scientific method. Instead, we're talking about the tools that a scientist uses to figure stuff out. These practices include asking questions, planning and carrying out investigations, analyzing data, using computation, constructing explanations, using evidence to support a claim, and obtaining evaluating information to communicate findings. One of these practices is new for most of us in science education. That is scientific modeling. This is a similar practice to the modeling you use in math instruction. We also have two practices that are most often used in engineering. These are defining problems and designing solutions. The disciplinary core ideas might have been what we typically called content. The terms are significantly different from each other because the focus is different. We want students to understand the big ideas of science, but not memorize just the facts or the individual elements of the system. We're trying to help students to progressively learn big ideas that are iterative through the pre-K through 12 learning continuum in life science, physical science, earth, earth and space science. Another component is engineering technology and the application of science. Throughout the standards, engineering design is not a separate discipline, but is applied to each of the learning disciplines in each grade level. Science ideas build from one grade level to another throughout a child's educational experience, not only in district from to district, but in most states. That is why it's so important for each grade level to do their part so the student can develop science ideas over time. The cross-cutting concepts are big organizing ideas that cut across and connects all of the science disciplines, and it could be applied to other subject areas as well. These include looking for patterns, describing the mechanism of cause and effect relationships, describing how changes in scale, proportion, and quantity change the system, explaining systems and system models, how energy and matter flows or cycles through a system and must be conserved, how structure affects function and sometimes vice versa, how systems can have stability or change or both at the same time. These parts come together in standards in what we call the performance expectation. The way the performance expectations are written explicitly uses the language of the three dimensions to describe student performance outcomes. These performance outcomes are used by assessment developers to write questions. You will see the engineering design aspect indicated in the standards when you see the asterisk at the end of a performance expectation. During training, you will learn more about these three dimensions, and you will also find resources for these dimensions in the beginning of your manual and in the appendix. We use the language found in the framework for K-12 science education in our manual with permission from the National Research Council. Engineering design is integrated into these standards as mentioned earlier with the science and engineering practices. Although we have, we tend to think of engineering as the calculus-based study we would find at MIT or Georgia Tech, engineering is a practice of defining a human problem and then setting out to find that solution, or two, or 50. Some teachers can find the process of engineering intimidating, but it can be as common as, let's say, planning a wedding. You have a deadline that is usually not very easy to change. You have the constraint of budget and time, and you have to figure out the logistics of how to move people from one part of the event to the next. 
There are lots, to way, lots of ways to solve these problems, but there's no one best way to solve the problem that you can find during your planning process. At Science 21, we have used a few design process models for reference, and we decided on a four-step problem-solving model for the K2 program and a five-step problem-solving model for the 3-5 program. As you can see, both of these processes are iterative, and we would like to have students use the cycle more than once for each engineering pro project that we've included in the curriculum. Due to the complexity of planning and materials, that may not always be possible to accomplish in your classroom. However, being mindful of the iterative nature of the design process is important. Ask students questions like, what would you do differently next time? Or, do you think you solved the problem? Get students in the frame of mind to think flexibly about ways to solve problems. Another element of engineering is being able to compare multiple solutions and deciding which is the best course of action for, for the desired outcome. Planning solutions that you may not have the time or the materials to car carry out is still an important element of engineering. Who knows, maybe the cycle of planning and evaluating multiple solutions could be helpful for the student in other subject areas. On every grade level of the Science 21 webpage, there is a scope and sequence for the entire K-5 curriculum continuum. This will clearly show you how the science ideas are interwoven throughout the curriculum and how closely aligned to the New York State Science Learning Standards each unit really is. This also may be helpful if you change teaching assignments from one grade level to another. For example, you may move to a grade level with lessons that introduce a science idea, or you may move to a grade level where the science idea is extended or brought to the next level. One of the most important aspects of the Science 21 curriculum is how much elementary classroom teachers are part of the curriculum development process. The Science 21 tagline, by teachers for teachers, is not just a catchy phrase. It is the core of our curriculum design process. We start with an outline of the curriculum developed by the Science 21 development team. These science education specialists make sure that we address the standards appropriately. We then recruit classroom teachers from Science 21 school districts and bring them in for extensive training in curriculum design and the new science standards, usually in the spring. During the summer, these teachers come back to PNW BOCES for a full week to write all the lessons in each grade level. Teachers discuss the appropriateness of the task, test out materials, and design tasks that will have students employ the three dimensions. In the next school year, the same teachers pilot every lesson written in the summer. After each unit, these teachers come back again to PNW BOCES to provide feedback and suggestions for improvement. The curriculum team then uses these suggestions to revise the lessons for the final manual that becomes the Science 21 curriculum. It is the same iterative design cycle I explained earlier. The new science standards have a complex interaction between the three dimensions. Science 21 has tried to address all aspects of these standards with as few lessons as possible. This was a very challenging task. We suggest that you do not skip any lessons. We do realize that teachers must make accommodations and modifications to some parts of the lesson based on your students in the classroom. Before you make any changes, make sure that you check the standards that you are provided to you during the training and in each lesson. Make sure you don't omit or skip over some of the critical aspects of the lesson that address a science and engineering practice, a disciplinary core idea, or a cross-cutting concept. Streamlining and focusing on just one or two dimensions defeats the pur purpose of the three-dimensional science instruction and fails to prepare the students for the three-dimensional assessments that they will encounter. The Science 21 curriculum development team has also looked to the other standards in ELA, math, and social studies and look for opportunities to reinforce those standards as well. We have worked very hard to make sure each le lesson is aligned to the science standards as possible while still making the lessons fun and engaging. A hands-on task is a great way of learning, but a student must also process what they're learning to make sense of the science ideas. 
We usually refer to this as mind's eye. Students should have some experience with using the three dimensions from other grade levels of Science 21. The lessons employ intriguing scientific phenomena and structured tasks so that they can have hands-on experiences that allow them to make real-world observations. The students will engage with these phenomena using the science and engineering practices, the disciplinary core ideas, and the cross-cutting concepts. We provide student pages that are structured so the student will then use their minds on ability to make sense of the phenomena and the science ideas. As they continue working through the lessons, using the three dimensions to figure out what's happening, the student's skills of figuring out what is happening solidifies into understanding. Hands-on is not enough, but when paired with minds-on tasks that engage all of the students' ways of learning, we have provided them with a scaffolding schema and schema and ability to make sense of any new phenomenon that they encounter. Thank you for your attention, and we look forward to seeing you at the synchronous training meeting.